is this picture has evolved several times. I'm sure you see ones on Instagram that have a similar type of color layout. Um, and this is the updated version, and this should kind of resonate with you based on what we've talked about a lot in the past two days. Yellow being cautious, right? Slow down, still want contact there, but let's not go too far to where now that's the green area and all the pressures on the inside of the foot. So I want to hold contact and that big toe knuckle that you guys are dialing into is right there. That's the piece that we've got to keep anchored in as we lift the inner ankle bone high. That will build really this half dome arch structure. So that kind of gives you a feel for the half dome arch. This is a really old book. I forget what year it was written, but Coach RJ found this. But this just gives you a visual of like the inside's the cliff side, and then the half dome arch kind of works to the outer corner of the foot. So we want to have sort of the majority of the pressure is going to funnel to this ribeye of the foot, leading to what this would be as maybe the, 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 the pinnacle of it, or really where everything kind of meets the gutter if you will, effect of everything sort of cascading. Even the toes are designed in that, that sense where it gets shorter over here. So we're gonna flow to feeling like this is where, man, that's the majority of the pressure. Almost like in the back pocket, you feel it kind of get more dense right there as the pressure goes. I would say that's the same idea with the foot. I'm still connected through here, but as I lift this inner ankle bone high, I feel the majority of the pressure set in to that corner. Now, as I'm doing all of that, this should just gradually get lighter and lighter, right? The more inner ankle bone high that I need, the more the heel lifts. But even in my eggshell heels, what have we noticed in our standing and our walking? We gotta get out of that thing. I just, I can't pressurize it and, and be in a situation where this will stay unlocked. So this gets locked when you go here, right? When you pressurize here, which also leads into this inside corner, you can almost see the yin and the yang of this versus this, so this inside corner is gonna lock that. So we wanna go really to this line, which brings us to this cuboid bone. So this cuboid bone more or less sits right underneath your outer ankle bone that you could touch and see. So it's kind of right down in there on the outside blade of the foot. As you can see, the fourth and fifth will connect into it. Let me get some of the images out of the way, or the colors out of the way so you can see it. So it's a very, it's a big bone. It's got some, it's, it's meant to hold some pressure. So when you're standing and you're walking, you'll probably feel more of all the way to here, right? You'll get to here. And then as you lift the heel up, obviously it feels like you're more just in here on the front balls of the feet, but you have all the way to this junction. Now it's going to butt up to the calcaneus. So this is your heel right here. It's big but it actually works into this cuboid region. So you wanna just make sure you don't cross that line and get too heavy into that heel part. You wanna be able to stay right to here. If you just kinda lift the eggshell heels, you could feel this bone work itself. Almost, it works down and out. So the foot control piece, like how these bones are gonna interact, is obviously the foot's gonna go straight. This is gonna climb high and it's actually gonna turn, it's gonna roll in this way a little bit, and the cuboid's gonna roll out that way. So if you just picture these, these four right here, the three cuneiform bones, and then this cuboid, if I was holding them in place like this, holding them in my hands, it would be like this. So this action takes place. It's like a multi-planar move at just the foot level to pop the inner ankle bone high and create that half dome arch structure. So straightening the foot, getting the inner ankle bone high, and setting that structure is a multi-planar turn throughout just this compartment, this foot compartment, and see this as part of the shin. So this becomes a talus, socket, ball, okay? Ball, socket. So it's a restricted ball and socket. Some anatomists have called it that. Some people call it a hinge. This is showing you that it's not. The video shows you that it's not a hinge. The design shows you that it's not a hinge. Here is the head. There is the neck, and then this is the articular surface that it's going to work itself around. So as you can see, I plug this in. This is showing you that it's like a book, and you're going to close the book. So when I close the book, I plug this talus in to the foot platform. There's your joystick analogy. 
Now here's another look at it. There's your joystick. There's your controller. Okay, so I want to plug the talus into the controller and then look at the articular surface that that talus has to work off of. So now it's going to glide and slide facing forward. So the ball is actually facing forward and it's going to turn like this. Then the hip is above and it's facing this way and it's going to turn like this. But in harmony, they work together, right? So the ball and socket above in the hip is playing on the same clip as the talus. That keeps the shin and the thigh on the same page. If the shin and the thigh are on the same page, my Achilles will be okay. My knee will be okay. When my foot, my shin, and my thigh are not operating in that joystick type behavior, right? They're all doing their own thing. Well, now the pieces that are connecting those three, they start to suffer. They get pulled apart, okay? That's where a shred can happen, and we know there's a multitude of different shreds. Any questions about just the foot piece?